you're watching NFT Talk with Brick Astley. GM, welcome to NFT Talk. I'm your host, Brick Astley. The purpose of this talk show is to highlight one one art on exchange art. Today's guest is a founding member of Soul City Radio Network and a knockout photographer. Neverland, welcome to NFT Talk, exchange art, and I really appreciate your time being here to talk about your work on the blockchain. Thank you, Brick. Thank you for having me. This is uh, this is really exciting. Let's Let's dive right into it. Yes, let's dive right in. So I know you from bouncing around in the Twitter spaces and um, getting up early for the Rise Before Grind show, Monday through Fridays. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful way to wake up um, and a great way to connect with others um, within the space. But for those that might be meeting you for the first time, can you give us a little bit of background on um, you as an artist and then how you found Exchange Art? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I started doing um, photography about five, six years ago. Um, didn't really find my niche, didn't really find what what it, it is that I like to capture. Um, took me a while, but then I, I did a portrait of my father uh, with the, the first camera that I ever got. I instantly fell in love with it, realized that I like to, you know, capture human beings, um, I partnered up with my best friend. Um, now he's my best friend, but we started as a photographer and a model. Um, and we've been working for the past four to five years, something like that. It took me like a year to find myself within that kind of um, uh, art industry. Um, I grew up in a, and in, in my mom is a photographer and a videographer. My dad is an actor, writer, director. So, um, I grew up in kind of a, this artistic environment. Um, and photography is just one of my pursuits. I also do music and writing and I, I paint and I act and I, uh, direct as well. Um, I found exchange art through, um, high road who is my uh, co-host in the Rise Before Grind show uh, about like a month and a half ago. Uh, you know, I've been, I got into Twitter and, and Discord because I realized that is where, you know, all the NFT is happening. I didn't know what, what an NFT was back then, um, but I was curious to see where are the one-on-one artists? Where is the art? Like, where can I find that? I logged into Twitter, created my account, kind of like looked like NFT photography, things like that. I found Hiro. He told me all about exchange art. Uh, I remember when I met you on the spaces and you really shed like a lot of light. Um, and I dropped my collection about like a week ago, a week and a half ago. Um, but yeah, I just, and I also joined exchange art discord. They, uh, helped me a lot. Like I was really nervous about like an auction that I was doing and I was running into like technical problems and within seconds they replied, they helped me, you know, got on a call with me. Pretty, pretty amazing. I really love what that platform does. And I'm really glad that I just like kind of stumbled upon it because <laughs> it's it just, it's, fa it's fate, right? It's fate. So Truthfully, I do is your, the collection. Can you talk to me a little bit about the meaning behind this collection? And I see that it's also listed as photography and poetry as you were talking about there just a moment ago. Can you give me the concepts on, on some of these? Yeah, for sure. So um, as you can see, the top left one, um, lead me on, that is the leading piece, which uh, means that it represents the start of my journey that started two years ago, but um, it is also the first um, piece that I chose to be included in this collection. And what I did choosing all of the pieces is that I always went back to that one. What resonates with that one? Um, my journey, you know, started two years ago. Um, it's a journey that started for all of us, uh, you know, in terms of the pandemic. Um, it started when I was in the army. So it was uh, really, really hard and kind of like limiting. Um, I couldn't do a lot of photography um, while being in the army and the pandemic. 
Um, so we, yeah, so you can see that the first piece kind of like always reminds me um, of he is falling, right? He's falling, but also there's this kind of light shade of blue that is calling for him. So for me, that was the first, like the initial struggle with the pandemic and being in the army that I feel like I'm fallen, but I'm such an optimistic person. I have such a solid base of like um, support with family and friends and they are kind of like my light that kind of pulls me. Um, and although that is a good thing, you can see that he's not completely falling. He's just stuck in the middle, which I think is such a miserable place being between black and white. The gray area of life is something that is very, very um, uh, difficult to deal with. I rather fall and deal with it or rise with, and deal with it than be in the middle. But that is where I was at that time. Um, and you can see beauty of dreams um, on the top right that is, you know, in moments of pain and loss. Just kind of like remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And that is the beauty of dreams, because all of that time I was like, you know what, I'm going to get out of the army and, and I'm going to do like crazy photo shoots and I'm going to write a bunch of music and record it and I'm going to um, release uh, my book and a poetry book as well. And that made me smile, kind of like reminding myself something there is like is waiting for me. I just got to, you know, be strong, finish this stuff first and then go ahead and do that. Um, it's a very emotional um uh, collection and it it's really thanks to this this guys that are um, um, here captured um, one of them the beauty of dreams guy his name is Ben he is my best friend um, he's not a model not an actor he's just a human being which I freaking loved um, the middle one corrupted uh, his name is Yuval which we share the same name um, he's an actor, so he was really able to kind of give the emotional um, expression a bit of like a, a spiciness to that because he knows how to do it on stage and theater and like theatrical acts are always like kind of like exaggerated in a way. Um, and if you go down a bit, you can see uh, the main um, like the model that I've been working on, uh, with for the past four years near the pseudo Bulbar effect and the sneaky moment that pieces, that's him. Um, he is really my partner in crime with everything related to photography. Um, we kind of come up with stuff together and he has his, you know, full trust in me, which allowed me to, um, kind of experiment with these photo shoots. And it's the same as my parents in my childhood, they put a lot of trust in me and allowed me to experience too. So that that is just growth and finding the right people to do that, to do that with. Oh, thank you for that. And thank you for sharing the story um, on, on that and how, uh, how your collection came to be. Um, so can you tell me, you talked about being in the military. Um, can you explain maybe like, or share any lessons like or experiences you learned from that maybe you're applying to your um, post-military life and here into the web three? Yeah, for sure. I think um, someone asked me a question um, um, kind of like similar to that. And I think is take a break. And what I mean by that is that, okay, I grew up in a artistic environment. I grew up in the backstage of every single theater here. Um, and on high, in high school, I went to an, a really, really like um, intense art campus. We were 24 seven doing theater stuff. Um, and those three years in high school were a lot for me. I learned a lot, I love that. But in the army, a lot of people expected me to go and do theater because you can do theater in the army and kind of go do little shows for all kind of like combat soldiers, you know, to make them, to make them happy and give them a little bit of entertainment rather than them being on the field 24 seven. 
Um, and I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to keep doing that for two years. I wanted a break. I wanted a, sh- a challenge. Um, I didn't really want to join the army, but two days into like boot camp, and I fell in love with it. Um, you know, with the idea behind it, um, and it felt like theater because the job in the army that I had is uh, I took care of people with criminal record or like problems at home and m- uh, money issues, um, people that you're not kind of sure if the army will help them or will make their situation worse. And I kind of went into the process with them of like verifying, like, you know, kind of going through uh, their mental health and physical health and making sure um, that joining the army is the right decision for them. Um, some joined, some didn't, you know, we, uh, I try to do my best to help people, um, but the army can be a very harsh place. Um, and I think me, doing that for two years, kind of like gaining humanity points. um, That was wonderful. So take a break sometimes because it also kind of like allows you to regenerate your uh, creativeness. Um, And that is something that I failed to do for the past month, but that is only because this journey has been so thrilling. Um, But I definitely need to go back and do that because taking little breaks in your day is something that can help you so much because sometimes we move the gears in our brain too much and too long. So for the, you're uh, beyond art, you're into, you're on the spaces and you're a founder of Soul City Radio Network. Can you give me a little bit of background on that and how people can tune in? Absolutely. Um, Well, the Soul City Radio idea um came up when you know we started doing the rise before grind show with Hyro and patrick um he goes by crypto mulliman no mulliman pat uh, crypto <laughs> but um we did that show and then there's the show that is called the shutter by the jump shoots um and then there's the exchange art photo collective by uns jane and there's so and the solpix community there's so many shows that I only learned about like two weeks getting into the Rise Before Grind show. So how, how I want to keep building in this community. I want us all to get it, go straight to the moon and beyond, you know? So how can we do it all together, but still allow everyone to keep the essence and core of their own shows? Let's create an umbrella, you know, and let's give it a name, Soul City Radio. That is all that it does right now. It brings all of us together, brings all the communities together. Um, We have a lot, a lot of plans um, moving forward with um, Soul City Radio. Um, And I think I think it's going to be really great. You know, we've built a structure to the Rise Before Grind. We've had amazing interviews. You know, today we had The Fallen. uh, Two more. We have um, uh, Paper Buddha. Um, We had my father on the show, who's an art professor. Um, Yeah, we have a lot, a lot coming. That's so exciting. So if the, if people want to tune in, um, what days and times are uh, the Rise Before Grind? That's the core show. And then they can kind of branch out and find all the other shows from there, right? Absolutely. So the Rise Before Grind uh, runs from Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. EST up until uh, 11 a.m. EST. Uh, and then we, ha- we have two core shows. So we have the Rise Before Grind in these hours. Then we have the Shutter with John which runs from uh, 11.30 uh, a.m. EST until uh, 1.30 p.m. EST. No, it's been it's been really great seeing and being a part of uh, the Rise Before Grind and Soul City Radio Network Rise. Um, you know, it's, it's very inspiring to see other builders in the space trying to push and elevate other artists forward. Um, I think that's important in this space. Um, with that being said, um, would you like to have any final closing comments to our viewers? Um, any ways they can get in contact or any kind of final thoughts um, for them? 
Well, uh, I just want to thank you and for whoever's listening right now. Thank you for, you know, tuning in. Uh, thank you, Brick, for doing this with me. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. This is the, this is uh, Neverland. Or you can find me on Twitter where I'm active, very 24 hours active. Uh, this is actually my handle. This is actually my handle. If, if, if y'all didn't figure it out by now, um x o one two x x that is my handle on twitter you can find me there dm me please dm me for anything that um you might need because you know you brick and hyro and patrick and john you've helped me a lot regarding exchange art and the twitter spaces thing so i can only pay it forward and i say it all the time and i freaking mean it um contact me just you know, slide into my DMs and ask any questions or just say hi. I would love to have a conversation. We appreciate that. And with that being said, um, we're going to close this out. I want to say be grateful for yourself, be grateful for others, and be grateful for Mother Earth. If you get a chance, go out and do a little bit of trash pickup, clean up a neighborhood, clean up a park you like, clean up an ocean you like, because without Mother Earth, none of this crypto, none of the fiat will ever matter. With that being said, always, always. GM.